Hey, this is Nigel, and I thought I'd make a quick dummy guy on how I'm doing this R hop conversion for uh, a little accuracy upgrade so I can hop some good sized BBs. This is the Pro N hop up out of my DMR that I've been working on getting a good R hop combination so I can lift some 0.40 novice BBs. And so it's been a bit of a pain in the butt compared to what they say online. Just, just going to put that out there, at least from a noob's perspective. So here's a noob perspective so you learn from my mistakes. Well, first off, uh, here's kind of what's going on. This is your regular hop-up, right? you got a rotary adjust. you got an arm that's going to be pressing down onto your bucking inside here to put a backspin. So I figure I might as well just show you guys exactly what that looks like. But first got to take this my little ring off pin out of there whoop don't mind me I do that a lot so when you pull this little snap ring off you can pull the dial off that's the profile that this lever is following so as you tighten it it's going to push this guy up. It's a little tight in there. This wasn't meant for this hop up chamber. <laughs> yeah, this is actually out of that one. That's a SHS. See, this is originally out of the Pro N. You see what I did? Screwed that up real good. Is I ground the entire block off the arm? Yeah, you don't do that. You just get the little cup teeth that usually grab your, uh, say here's a, see, position it up. So you got your maple leaf, omega, see it's got that little round bit that used to go on the arm. Well, apparently you're supposed to only take off the teeth that cup that, and then you leave the block on. That's how you make this work. So, don't make the same mistake I did. Just grind the teeth off, and then you're going to put your little M-nub patch stuff on there. Anyway, back to how this works. So, this little patch here is going to push down on the bucking, which, if I pull this out of here real quick. This is a uh, Mad Bull Red Bucking, if anyone wants to know. Pull this guy off here. Now, you see this little patch here? It's literally just this tube here cut into a little patch to fill the empty window of the barrel. See? Wee! Little empty window. That little patch. Right? Now, obviously I'm not perfect about it, so I'm still working on that. But, Umbrella Armory will do this patch to your barrel for 50 bucks. Your choice on whether or not that's worth it. That's a lot. But, if you don't do this right, if you have a little too much material here, or too much material here, That'll put an uneven pressure on the BB, and then it will curve hard right or hard left. So, food for thought. This job does require some fine-tuning and precision. So, if we put that guy back in there. Whoop. Arm back. It's a little difficult to see with all the shadows from the light, but the light means you can't see. So, see, we're going to just kind of apply a little pressure and aim for the low spot on the groove. Then snap the ring on that on there. That's your hop up. All right, so well, when we start from scratch, basically you're just gonna need yourself exacto blade. Yeah, real fancy. You got your little tubing. Now I'm not gonna do a very grand job. This is just a demonstrate. So you're gonna cut it size of that window. 
I usually aim a little big so I can trim it. Whoop! A little trick I started doing is take your little wheel, see which side of your cut fits the window best. That's a rather crap cut, but it's okay. I already made a good one. This is just to show you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to cut it so you best mimic the inside of your uh, barrel. Now, if you have a pair of calipers, you can gauge that out, gauge that out here, but it's a little piece of rubber, so it's not going to do the hottest. So it's just a real thin slice. Whoop. I find that once you make that first cut, the rest of this is useless. You're not going to be able to cut that. So. You take your little cut and you see how it fit in the window. Now you can see mine fit like crap. Now the other thing to check though is see if I can get the flashlight to point at it is how well it cups with your inner barrel when it's sitting in its position. I'm not gonna lie though, for just rough cutting, it's pretty close to the inner barrel. It's a little high on the right. So that means it's gonna apply pressure on the left first and hook. So you gotta get that right. Or else you're going to be fighting BBs hooking on your long-term setup barrel. So anyway, that's I'm going to call that one junk. It's a bad cut. That's why you buy a bunch of this tubing. This is all off McMaster. Uh, I forget the part number off the top of my head. I'll probably put that in the video description. Anyway. So we got this little guy here. Now, the deal with these is that with this patch filling up the window, if you leave this sharp edge right there it's gonna cause a BB jam if a BB tries to go through it's gonna hit that sharp edge and just get stuck so what you gotta do is you gotta get out your handy dandy Dremel you gotta give it a little bit of a chamfer for those who don't know what a chamfer is it's Basically just an angled edge. There you go. Engineering term 101. Just a little bit. That chamfer is going to make it easier for the BB to make its way through. It's a little entryway, if you will. And a little bit on the exit, too. This plate's safe. A little heavy on one side than the other. There you go. Put you away. Alrighty. So now we got that. Now the next step is even. I don't know, your, your choice. I think it's the hardest is getting a good cut. But some people have different experiences. So I have my nice chamfered patch. I'm going to put it in that window. Now you'll, it's a little difficult to notice on camera, but it's bigger than the outer barrel. Alright? Just slightly. Whoop. Run away. So the way it's a little bit bigger means we're going to have to sand down the outside to make that flush with the outer barrel. Alright? Now to do that, I like to put down, move you out of the way, making messes. Put down a little bit, make sure your barrel can't roll away. Some people like to work in vices. I don't have a vice, so I make two. And you make sure your surface is sort of prep. You, you know, acetone it if you're a neat freak. Gives you a better bond. You got your black RTV. You can get this Walmart, AutoZone, O'Reilly's, and just about anywhere. It's a pretty generic auto repair material. Now you need a little bit. This might even be too much, because we're literally just going to put a little... A little dab. It's 
the little dab on the outside. Whoop that, yeah, that's it. The idea is to have it just on the shelf. Because if you put too much, it's going to creep its way into your inner barrel. Alright, now we got that. If you ever get this stuck in your hands, you have to use that stone to get it off. But while it's wet, it comes off relatively easy. So we got a pitch. And we are literally, well, well this is a, I didn't explain this. These two pieces, made by uh, Hunter Seeker Armory. You can get them online. Guy made a pretty cool tool. Fits you inside your barrel quite nicely. This cups the outside for whenever you're checking how flush the outside of the patch is. I also like to use it as a tool to keep my patch weighed down during this drying process. Because RTV takes a few hours to sort of set. But then it'll take uh, 24 hours to cure. Just to play it safe. Make sure that you're... Uh, Little guy doesn't come off, so we're just gonna let that take a nice snap. Sometimes I like to put a little weight on it. Sort of like so. Woo! Woo! Don't roll away on me now. You get a little balancing act going. That keeps a little pressure on it. Because I found that the RTV has imagined like a little bit of a buoyancy, an expanding effect. Just, it doesn't want to stay squeezed by the patch. So you gotta have a little weight to keep it down so it doesn't lift your patch so that it no longer matches your inner barrel, inner diameter. All right, so that's that dumb bit out of the way. Now the next dumb bit is your bucking, all right? Now you can either buy a bucking that has a perfectly smooth inner barrel, well, inner bore, or you can modify a current bucking you like in order to have a smooth inner bore, this is a Maple Leaf uh, 70 degree? I think it's a 70 degree. I think the 75 is the pink. So this is meant for a lower FPS. I was thinking about putting this in uh, an automatic gun. And the pink ones, I think, are meant for, you know, 350 to 400. And then the black ones, like this guy, that's an 80 degree. That's meant for over 400. However, I found this guy does not work so hot in the cold, to be perfectly honest. My babies were a little stray at first game day. But what you're doing is there's a little mound that touches the BB that gives a backspin. Now, that's kind of common knowledge, I know, but basically this used to be your combo. This little feller here in the maple leaf would press onto a, a bucking mound in there and that would put a backspin on the BB. Well, what I did is you flip these guys inside out Usually a good, damn it. good trick is to use your inner barrel to flip it out by slipping an inner barrel inside and rolling it around. Can't do that right now because, well, that feller is on there. And once you have it flipped inside out, just smooth the uh, mound that is currently contacting the BB. With I, I found 120 grit sandpaper works pretty nicely. I mean, same thing kind of goes if you want to just use a Dremel, go do it fast, but I like, found taking my time gets better result. So you have that nice and smooth so it no longer touches the BB. Instead, the little patch will. The patch will touch the BB. That's his job. This whole patch touches the BB. Not a little, not a little bump, the patch touches the BB. Okay? Got it. So once that is dry, what we'll do is you sand that uh, little bit of tubing up top that's not flush with the barrel, nice and flush until this little shaper tool can show you it's nice and flush. And then once that's all flush and RTV'd on, this slides right on over. I didn't remove the slot so that can stay right where it is. Your preference, you can remove that and then you can spin it to a bare spot that's never been touched. That way that touches the patch. Have at it, your choice. And the next bit to not make the mistake is, like I said earlier, don't grind that all the way to this arm in your rotary hop-ups. That is too much material removed, period. Uh, I found out that this uh, M-nub material off McMaster, again, I'll try to find it and put that in the description, it squeezes a lot. And if you have this much material removed, 
I had to have this double stacked and it just didn't work. I mean, it, it did touch the BB, but the hop was just way off. It didn't work. So, don't take it all the way down to the flat bit. Leave that mound on there. Just take off the teeth. All right. Now, with this patch material, all you're doing is just, simply enough, you know, you're going to cut some length X. And then... I'm going to cut it again on the, shorten it down a bit like that. I'm going to keep bumping that now. This is in my workspace. But anyway, see this little guy here has a little sticky back. Now this little sticky back here should go right on the end of your mound. Just like I showed earlier. So see, it'll be go there, and then that's gonna press on your little patch. So this is effectively your hop-up combo. See how much that squishes? Yeah, you can't remove so much material that it just squishes to the point of no longer putting a hop on your BB. Now, you don't necessarily have to do the M nub. You can still get away with your usual flat hop nubs. Like, uh, Maple Leaf has their Omega here. I've used that in a sniper. It's currently a ghost sniper, actually. And it works just fine. So, you'll have your M-Nub. You'll have the patch, nice and flush. You'll have your smooth bucking. And if you did all that perfectly, you're going to hop a BB like crazy. Like I said, my DMR is able to hop 40s right now, so... Woo! Good to go. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know.